So, God, so the man yelled to God, Speak to me, and the thunder roared across the sky. Sorry for that you can't make this out quite right. So I'll read it. <clears throat> but the man did not listen. The man looked around and said, God, let me see you, and the sun bright, shined brightly. But the man did not see. And the man shouted, God, show me a miracle. And a life was born. But the man did not notice. So then God, so then the man cried out, God, touch me. And let me know that you are here. Whereupon God reached down and touched the man. But the man <laughs> brushed the butterfly away. I found this to be a great reminder that God is always around us in little simple things and we take that we take for granted. So I would like to add one more. The man cried, God, I need your help, and an email arrived, reaching out with good news and encouragement. But the man deleted it and continued to cry. Don't miss the, out on this blessing because it isn't packaged the way you expect it. My instructions were to send this to people, and I want God to bless you, and I choose you. All right. Seeing God and wanting him to touch you. Again, sorry for the uh, focusing thing on the camera. The Lord spoke to Moses, go down and warn the people so that they do not break through to the Lord to gaze and many of them perish. Yeah. The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for you warned us, saying, set boundaries around the mountain and consecrate it. Good. So the Lord said to, the, said to him, go down again and come up again, you and Aaron, but do not let the priests and the people break through and come to the Lord, for he will he who will break forth upon them, meaning killing them all, right? Hmm. Samuel, uh, that was the 19th chapter of uh, Exodus, by the way. Samuel 6, verse 7. A guy trying to do the right thing uh, when they were carrying the ark uh, on a cart but when they came to the threshing floor of Nacan, Uzzah reached toward the ark of God and took hold of it. The oxen nearly upset it, and God in anger burned against Uzzah, and God struck him down for this irreverence, and he died there by the ark. What happened was is the ark was about to fall. This happens another time, and the ark strikes him dead. Isaiah, one of the holiest prophets of Israel. Uh, let me just read the whole thing. It's chapter 6. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, lofty and exalted, a train of robe filling the temple. Seraphim stood above him, each with six wings. These are the creatures made out of fire. Uh, singing, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory, and the foundations of the thresholds of the temple t trembled. And his voice called out while the temple was filling with smoke. And then I said, Woe is to me, I am ruined, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I live in unclean people. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. So one of the seraphim flew and reached out and put a, took a burning coal in his hand and touched his tongue. Behold, this has taken away your iniquity, and all your sins are forgiven. 
And then multi that's what had to have happened or else he would have died. And in multiple other places, it says no one has seen the face of God. If you see God, you will die. Even Moses had to be put in the cleft of a rock and only what, quote unquote, what the back of God is not anthropomorphic, but he was seeing the back of God. When he said he wanted to see the face of God, angel of the Lord told him, you'll, you'll die. You will be erased from existence. This, when God whispers, is pure paganism because they seeing God in nature, right? Seeing the craft, the craft work of God in nature or that the, you know, the nature, the stars and the heavens declare the glory of the Lord. And so does the in intricacy. The only thing that was correct in here was the miracle of a birth, right? But it said, God showed me a miracle and a child was born. Well, a child's born every, what, six seconds? And, um, yeah, this is pure paganism. Because what is, what is paganism? It worships the creation, right? Worships trees and the rocks, which is why science was hindered for so, why, why science couldn't come about until basically monotheism. Um, first with uh, the Israelites, but then with the Greeks who really kind of started off with science. And then the church picked up, inherited both the, the Greek, uh, philosophers and the ancient Israelites and uh, boom the West took off paganism is saying God uh, I want to see you and an animal appears that's Native American shamanism or something like that even then I don't think they'd be that hokey um, but if God, show me your glory is a verse to a Protestant song. Uh, I don't want to see God's glory because I will be destroyed or driven insane. Uh, I want to be in your presence, God. Uh, no. <laughs> Even biblically, like, not until after the resurrection, right? And even then... If you were full of sin, if you're, you know, a wicked person, you are going to be burning forever. Uh, here's, this is what it feels like to be in the presence of God. Step into, pour gasoline all over yourself and step into a bonfire. And that's what it's going to be like. Anybody who's encountered an angel in the Bible has done so trembling. The Theotokos might be an exception. But everybody else fell down as if they were dead or screamed, get away from me. The people at Mount Sinai hid under rocks in pain and terror because the mountain burned when God descended upon it and smoke went up. When God whispers, that's not God. And guess what? Uh, we're told God already spoke. If you want to meet God, there's one place he said he'd surely be, and that's in the Eucharist. And that's in scripture. If you want to touch and be with God, it's through his son. It's the only way. And you know what? A Christian made that video. Preaching paganism. Peace to you.